Happy Friday, everybody. I hope you've had a great week, and welcome to The Daily Drive. My name is Bro, and we hang here a few minutes each weekday trying to get to know God a little bit better. And we've been talking this spring with the grass starting to grow and the flowers popping up and the trees budding out and folks cultivating and planting gardens about how God is a master gardener. I mean, God is really into growing things, especially you and me. And we've talked about different ways that he does that through pivotal circumstances and practical teaching and providential relationships and passionate ministry. If you missed any of those along the way, you can go back and catch up. But today I want to wrap this up by talking about how God uses public obedience to grow our character. Y'all ever been to a farmer's market? You know, that, that place is full of down-home, fresh, delicious fruits and vegetables. I mean, you look at that, a lot went into it. I mean, there's there a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes, a lot of plowing, a lot of cultivating, planting, uh, watering, fertilizing, pruning, uh, harvesting. Then they load it all up and they take it to market. And then they make known what they've been growing. They kind of go public with it. I, I love what Ephesians 2.10 says about you and me. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. God in his grace grows us up and he puts us on display so that he can show the world how he can grow anything and anybody. And I'm learning that when I live my life like it's on public display, not in a phony you know, performance kind of way, but in a way that says, man, I just want to show up and shine a light on him. Maybe by making the right choice, maybe by doing the right thing, maybe by reacting in the right way or saying it in the right tone, maybe people will notice how much my life has changed. And maybe they'll notice how good God is. Whether we like it or not, we are on public display. At school, at work, in the neighborhood, in the checkout line, in traffic, in the little league stands, on the field, on the court, on the tee box, people are watching. You know, I told you I have one tattoo, two chicken to get another one. It's on the back of my calf. And it's a reminder to me from Micah 6, 8. It simply says, act justly, love mercy, walk humbly with God. And I wear shorts a lot, uh, even in wintertime. And I was frustrated about something with our internet not a while back there. And uh, I, I tried a bunch of times to get it resolved over the phone. And I, I, I was very kind, I might add, but it wasn't working out. So I had to grab the router and I had to take it to the store. And they gave me the wrong address to take it to. And I drove to an abandoned storefront. So I called them again, and they gave me the right address, which was all the way across town. So I drove across town, and Debbie could sense I was getting a little frustrated. So as I got out of the truck wearing my shorts, she said, Hey, remember your tattoo? <laughs> oh, man. We are on display, and I'm learning that every time I listen to the Holy Spirit and do the right thing, I grow a little bit more. The book of Acts in the New Testament is the history of the early church, how it began with a handful of men and women who were not afraid to go public with their faith. You ought to take this week and just read the book of Acts. Just make it part of your summer reading. Acts chapter 1, you'll see Jesus challenge this ragtag bag of followers to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to take the message of God's love like all over the world. And he tells them that the Holy Spirit would take up residence inside of them and give them the courage and the right words to say. He would also produce some amazingly attractive fruit in their lives like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, the kind of fruit that people can't help but notice. In chapter 2, you'll see how they all go public with their faith during this huge festival being held in Jerusalem. It was not quite two months since the very public crucifixion of Jesus, and led by the Holy Spirit of God, they seize the opportunity, and they start telling his story. And Peter, who was kind of like the leader of the group, but had never, ever done any public speaking, well, that's not exactly true. One time he spoke up publicly, saying he didn't know Jesus. Out of fear, he denied his friendship with Jesus. But now, he speaks up and begins to preach his very first sermon. He recounts history and prophecy and mixes all that with current events. He quotes Old Testament scriptures. He talks about how they could be forgiven through faith in Jesus as the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And then he challenges the people to repent, to turn around and return to God. And they do. And this church begins to flourish and make a difference in the community. They center their lives around Jesus. They share with each other and those in need. They pray together, eat together, reach out to their friends together. And every day somebody new comes to faith in Jesus Christ. It's this organic thing that is just growing like crazy. You really ought to read the book of Acts. It's like this awesome, action-packed novel, except it's not fiction or even based on a true story. It's actual history written by a meticulous historian named Luke, and it will pump up your faith when you read it. But the early church grew, and it flourished because people tried to keep it simple. 
They tried to love God and love people. They simply wanted to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. It says they were generous and kind. They were loving among their neighbors. They even made friends out of their enemies. Their vibrant faith was on display and threw a floodlight on God, and it made other people want what they had. You know, Peter, the guy that preached that sermon in the streets of Jerusalem, would later write this in 1 Peter chapter 2. He said, Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior, and they will give honor to God. So let's live today. Let's live this weekend totally aware that you and I are on display. Let's keep it simple. Let's just act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God, and show the watching world the change that God can make in anybody's life, the growth He can cause in anybody's life. And I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday.